no skin in the game. My refrigerator broke. It's a side-by-side -side refrigerator with the freezer on the left side and the refrigerator section on the right. For over 17 years, this refrigerator had never given me a problem. Then one day, I noticed a puddle under the freezer door. I opened it to find all my frozen items defrosting. A lot of guys are handy with appliances. I'm not one of them, so I called a repairman. He came out the next day and was super nice. He took off the back panel and examined the guts of the appliance. He replaced a minor part of the refrigerator in hopes that was the only problem, then let out a sigh and said, Oh boy. Turns out the compressor went bad. In case you didn't know, the compressor is one of the most important and expensive parts of a refrigerator. He informed me that it was going to cost me approximately 850 bucks to have my old refrigerator repaired. Being an honest person, the repairman explained to me that a good rule of thumb for considering a repair job versus a new refrigerator is that if the repair costs more than half of what it would cost to buy a new fridge, it's better just to get a new one. It appeared that a new refrigerator was in my future. I got on the internet and scoured through all the major appliance retailers and searched for my new refrigerator and after a fair amount of investigating, I finally narrowed the search down to the refrigerator of my future. It was the same brand as my old one, same style, and had the exact dimensions. It was basically just a newer version of my old faithful fridge. One of the major home improvement stores had the refrigerator on sale and offered next day delivery for free. They'd even haul off my old refrigerator for me. The final cost was just $400 more than it would have cost to have the old refrigerator fixed. Sounded like a great deal to me. It was a chilly night, colder than a freezer, so I took all my refrigerated and frozen items, including 10 pounds of chicken fillets I had just purchased, and set them outside on the balcony. That would definitely keep them sufficiently cool until the new refrigerator arrived. I used my final vacation day of the year to take off work the next day to make sure I was home for the delivery. It was a bit of a downer that I had to use a vacation day on something like this, but you know, what can you do, right? It was early in the day when the delivery driver called me and said he'd be at my location within 15 minutes. I advised him to go around the back of the building and to call me when he got there. I live in an old building in the downtown section of a historic town. My apartment is on the third floor. It's above a very nice antique store. The stairs to get up to my apartment are not friendly. There are over 40 steps, and it's not a straight shot. The stairs zigzag, similar to stairwells in tall buildings. There are five to seven stairs and then a landing, at which point you turn 180 degrees and go up the next flight of five to seven stairs and so on until you reach my apartment. It's a pain to move big heavy items up and down. When the driver called, I came down to meet him. I was surprised that the delivery truck was not displaying the name of the home improvement store I purchased the refrigerator from. It was just an old beat up moving truck. The driver exited the truck. He wasn't very big, as I would have expected a mover to be. He was tall, but on the wiry side. I probably outweighed him by 50 pounds. His hair was greasy and unkempt. He held a permanent scowl that revealed tobacco-stained teeth. He pointed to me. You the fella who ordered the refrigerator? Evidently, the home improvement store used a third-party delivery service. Even though the truck and delivery man were not what I was expecting, he did confirm that he was here to deliver the refrigerator, and I was getting excited. Sure, I'd miss my old fridge, but a sparkling brand new one would look fantastic in my kitchen, and I was anxious to get it in place. But first things first. Show me where you want us to haul this thing to. I led the delivery man to the back door of the building and started showing him the challenging steps. He wasn't happy. Damn, they didn't tell me there were so many stairs. As I toured him through the entire staircase, he occasionally pulled out a dirty tape measure to gauge various sections. He then removed his phone from his pocket. He put his phone on speaker as he called his partner out in the truck. 
Hey, Mac, we have three stories of stairs here. His partner didn't attempt to hide his dismay. What? You gotta be kidding. Damn it. Listen, just get the refrigerator ready. You understand? There was a long pause before his associate responded by saying, Oh, yeah, okay. When the delivery man and I stepped out of my building and approached the truck, the second delivery person, who was robust and bald, was standing next to my shiny new fridge and pointed to it as he broke the bad news. We have damage here. The thin delivery man pretended to be upset, but he wasn't a very good actor. Ah, that's a shame. I stared at my would-be refrigerator. There were two large ball-peen dents on the bottom of the front door. The top of the door had scratches running across it as if a bear had attacked it. The main delivery man was quick to present the only option I had. Obviously, you'll want to refuse this as a damaged product. I'll report this and someone will give you a call to reschedule another delivery. I found myself turning red with anger. It, it was early in the week. I had just used my last vacation day to be available for this delivery. A, a, another delivery? Will it be later today? The delivery man shook his head. You'll have to work that out with customer service when they call you, but it will probably be tomorrow or the next day. Will you guys be delivering it? The unkempt man smirked. Nah, it'll be another team. And with that, they drove off. I waited by the phone the rest of the day and never received a call. By the time I attempted to call myself, their customer service hours for the day had ended. I went to work the next day and called the company from work. I was on hold for over an hour before I was connected with a not-so-friendly agent who informed me that I needed to talk to the warehouse in order to get my delivery rescheduled. She transferred me and I was on hold for another hour. During this time, my jerk-off boss noticed I was spending an excessive amount of time on non-work calls and gave me an earful. But eventually, I got through to the warehouse and they rescheduled my refrigerator delivery for the next day. It had gotten warm during the day, warmer than I expected, and the ten pounds of newly acquired chicken was no longer light pink. The fresh color had faded slightly, but I deemed it to still be good. The night was supposed to be cool, so I was still in good shape not to lose any food. The next day I called in sick so I could be home for the delivery. The delivery people arrived late in the afternoon. So late, in fact, that if I had known, I could have actually worked that day and simply left early. I wouldn't have lost as much money. But I was just glad that this nightmare of a hassle was about to be over. Once again, a nondescript third-party delivery truck arrived. A large man with a black bandana and dark sunglasses stepped out of the ragged truck. He was wearing a stained white t-shirt and black vest. He had a tattoo on his forearm that read, Suck my left nut. I took him on a tour of the foreboding stairwell, and like the delivery people before him, he wasn't pleased. Oh man, nobody told me about this. When we got back out to the truck, his assistant, who appeared to be way too small to be a mover, had the refrigerator out and was waiting for us. Surprise, surprise, he was pointing out some damage on the side of the appliance. I stepped up to the frail associate who reeked of marijuana and observed the damage. Again, it was a small dent, but this time it was only on the side and near the back. It would barely be visible once the refrigerator was in place. I can live with that. The large tattooed man shook his head. No, nah, man, you need to refuse this because of damage. You paid a lot of money for this thing. I'll report it damaged and customer service will call you to reschedule a delivery. There was no way I was going through this again. I stood chest to chest with the man who was much bigger than me and spoke through gritted teeth. Take it up to my kitchen right now. The man could see I was serious and got to work. He and his minuscule associate used mover straps to haul the big refrigerator into the building. 
The tattooed man barked at his puny associate to get in the correct position as they attempted to get the appliance up the first flight of stairs. They halted when the refrigerator hit the ceiling. Sorry, man, it's too big. We can't get it up these stairs. I shouldn't have been shocked, but I was. They were trying to carry the refrigerator upright, so I shouted out obvious instructions. You're gonna have to lean it over a little bit to get it into the stairwell, and then you'll be clear of the ceiling. Hey, look, I'm not Hulk Hogan. You're just gonna have to buy a smaller refrigerator. I guess that was the last straw for me. I have a refrigerator upstairs in my kitchen that is the same size as this one. If they got that one up there, you can get this one up there. The tattooed man leaned over to me and spoke in a loud whisper. Look, my regular partner called in sick. This weed-smoking kid is just a useless temp. If I had my regular guy, we could do it, so just reschedule for another day. I could feel my flesh burning as my temper began to bubble like lava. I tried to keep it in check because I feared what my actions may be if it erupted. You're just an outsourced worker. You're not part of the company I bought this refrigerator from. You have no skin in the game. You don't care. And I've had enough. Take this refrigerator and take your lazy ass and get the hell out of here before I lose my temper and chop your damn head off. My eyes must have been displaying my rage because the big intimidating man's face was overcome with fear as he hustled the refrigerator out of my building into their truck and sped away. I called the home improvement store from which I ordered this refrigerator, canceled my order, and got a refund. I then ordered the very same refrigerator from one of their competitors who assured me I would receive it the following day. I would have to call in sick again and lose another day's pay, but I was in a bind. On top of that, the temperature was rising. I stepped out onto the balcony and looked down at my ten pounds of chicken. The skin was now greenish gray. The once bright white fatty pieces were now urine yellow. My chicken was spoiled and ruined. The fuse on my temper was now non-existent. The next day, I discovered that the new big box home improvement store that I had ordered the refrigerator from also used a third party delivery service. I knew this because I was greeted by the same messy haired, rotten toothed delivery man who had started this whole nightmare ball rolling. Well, 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 we meet again. I barked at him. Shut your mouth, get my refrigerator, and move it up to my kitchen right now or else. He found my fury amusing and grinned. Hold your horses, tough guy. I gotta inspect it for damage first. His robust, bald companion pushed the refrigerator to the edge of the truck, and the wiry delivery man picked up a crowbar. He used it to tear the styrofoam and plastic from the large appliance. As the scruffy man disappeared behind the refrigerator, I heard a loud bang. When he re-emerged, he was holding a devious smirk. Sorry to say, I found some damage. I hopped up into the truck and observed the dented side of the refrigerator. The disgusting delivery driver spit a tobacco-laced wad of phlegm near my feet. You'll have to call and schedule another delivery. I jerked the crowbar from the delivery man's hand and pounded him over the head with it. Blood cascaded down his face as he collapsed to the ground and began convulsing. The robust, bald delivery man was shocked by my actions, but not as shocked as he was when I drove the claw of the crowbar into his mouth, shattering the majority of his teeth instantly. I then jerked the crowbar upward, shoving the iron bar through the roof of his mouth and up into his brain. He dropped to the ground dead next to his convulsing partner. I watched on as the messy-haired delivery man's last death twitches finally subsided. It wasn't easy, but I managed to push both dead bodies into the back of their crappy delivery truck and drove it to an old abandoned bridge. From there, I pushed it over the edge into the roaring river below. Nobody would ever find them. I had committed two ghastly murders 
But damn, it felt good. The next day, I called my repairman and had him replace the compressor in my old refrigerator. It was a lot of money for a repair, but I was happy to give my well-earned money to a nice, honest, hard-working man. Hopefully, the new compressor would breathe new life into my old, faithful refrigerator friend, and it would last another 17 years.